Thanks to Ren for sponsoring today's video. What if you had a song that went... And then the drums went... And then the bass went... That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? It's almost as if I made the song before I made the TikTok, wondering, wondering, imagining what this song could possibly sound like if, if the guitar went Charlie Puth is an extremely talented musician who you might know from that one song. It's been a long day without you, my friend. He's now known for his pretentious yet slightly self-aware TikToks about his perfect pitch. Ooh, that was an F sharp. And what a lot of people don't know is that he got his start on YouTube like the rest of us. And I was one of his first 50,000 subscribers. That's right. I knew Charlie Puth before it was cool. Who threw this pickle at me? Ow. Who threw this pickle at me? Excuse me. I'm the Charlie Puth hipster. Charlie Puth gatekeeper. In fact, you can be a Gabby Bell gatekeeper if you hit that subscribe button. I'm waiting. So something in Google or Instagram's algorithm went haywire when they saw that I, one, liked making music, and two, know who Charlie Puth is because this ad was shoved down my throat. Hi, I'm Charlie Puth. I'm a songwriter, producer, and artist, and welcome to my monthly class. This class is a hands-on 30-day learning experience designed to teach you everything I know about writing and producing music. But their ad money to show that to me didn't go to waste because I was instantly intrigued. Because I, as an aspiring artiste myself, wanted to brush up on my skills. I mean, how cool is this shit? I get to sit here at home looking up at Charlie saying, Yes, daddy, feed me. And Charlie will, will spoon feed industry secrets and knowledge on how to make your song sound radio ready right into my mouth. I'm so sorry for that analogy. And I couldn't possibly have spent $279 on this class so I could review it for YouTube, right? No, I, I didn't. I bought the class like a year ago. And lucky for me, and you, I have full access to the class still. Actually, I never finished the classes yeah. because the second half of the class is just them saying, okay, now do what we taught you in the first half, but repeat it. Along the way, I'm gonna be explaining everything that I'm doing. My thought process, my techniques, the exact sounds and plugins I'm using. We'll cover crafting melodies, writing lyrics, recording vocals, stacking harmonies, arranging, song structure, composing parts, programming drums, mixing, mastering, and a lot more. This is what sold me. I have experience writing and producing, but I'm self-taught. I'm not an expert, and I have trouble getting that final touch, that final mixing and mastering to make my song sound radio ready, that polish. And who better to learn it from than someone in a similar genre as me, and from someone with such high prestige, and who's really achieved it all, while being in a small class size environment. During the class, you'll meet with other songwriters and producers from all levels around the world who will be taking the class with you. You'll be part of an intimate peer group with real-time, hands-on assignments. It's just like college all over again, except you don't have to see anyone in person and without sneaking water bottles full of vodka into class. I only did that like twice, don't judge me. I mean, this class really sounded like the real deal. I'm gonna know everything there ever was to know about music production, just short of being able to overthrow inner records. I mean, they really sell you on it. If you've always been interested in writing and producing your own original songs, but you never took the first steps, or if you're a singer-songwriter looking to expand your writing and producing skills, or even if you're a more experienced producer looking to learn new ways of doing things, this class is for you. Committing to this class will give you the structure, guidance, and support you need to create the music you've been looking to make. It's for beginner songwriters. It's even for experienced producers to learn a new way of doing things. The advertising made it seem like it was a valuable class for anyone of any level. We'll get into that. I also found out the class was pre-recorded and gets advertised in cycles on monthly.com, now rebranded to studio.com, so they can profit off of as many iterations of this class as possible, rinse and repeat, while making it seem like you're getting this intimate, small class size experience with Charlie the Pooth himself. It's not. I thought I would try a new angle for this portion of the video, but I'm quickly realizing I don't like it. You do get to see my sweatpants, though. I also can't see the script. 
The class is basically just Charlie Puth's TikToks, but hour-long compilations of it. What if there was a song that started off like... I'm kidding, but seriously, the classes are structured in segments. Week one, you watch the first video on how to craft a melody and get an idea for the song you wanna write and write some of the lyrics. And then the next week's video on your introduction to the digital audio workspace gets made available to you. So it's, it's on a weekly basis, one class gets made available to you at a time and so on and so on. Throughout the class, you turn in assignments on a schedule as you make your song with Mr. Pitch Perfect. You see, the problem is that they don't cut down any of Charlie's process, which can be both a gift and a curse. I mean like you did, but act like I did not. Ooh. Go and get my hopes up and love me like. Oh, I need to put these on a different thing. 3940. 3940. Good. But I guess I just don't I was wondering why they wasn't making it different. Each class is well over an hour long, basically uncut, just watching him fiddle around on the computer. And I have ADHD. It was extremely difficult watching Charlie's unedited process on making a song, when a lot of the time he wasn't really explaining what he was doing, especially when it came to the technical stuff like plugins. Six, going through a, uh, well, it used to be a TD2, now it's a, it's a Neve kind of situation. Um, I'm not even gonna pretend I know all the ins and outs of that compressor. It just makes my voice sound good. I get that they probably decided to make each weekly class an hour long, so that way people felt like they were getting the most out of their money, and to make it closer to an actual college class you can take. But the difference is, is that you can't ask any questions, obviously, because it's pre-recorded, and that usually a professor at a college usually has each week's class broken down into even smaller segments of learning. This was just an hour-long class of basically virtually shadow someone making a song on the computer. And while this can be helpful, number one, I can just find that on Twitch. I just didn't find it valuable for my time and money, at least in the way that they presented it. Because it didn't even really feel like I was shadowing someone. It felt like I was just watching. I think it's important to preface this whole video with the knowledge of where I come from as a musical background. I've been doing music for a very, very long time. I've been playing guitar since I was 12, and I've been singing basically ever since I could talk. Let's just say High School Musical was my bread and butter, and I had a rock band at 15. I was pretty cool. <laughs> I've been writing music since I was 12 and recording my own music in uh, knockoff software since I was like 13, 14 years old. And what came out of that? Well, this masterpiece, first of all. Oh, saying that to brag that I was a child music prodigy. But no, seriously, it's just so you have perspective of where of how I'm approaching this class. I'm not a beginner at all, but I'm certainly not an expert. And if you're asking why I even took this class if I'm so good and talented, well, firstly, because the class was marketed towards all skill levels and me not being an expert, I was part of that advertising group, which by the way is definitely the first red flag from this class that they just want to get as many sales in the door as possible. But I also took the class because I thought I was missing that studio polish that people much more talented than me have and the knowledge of doing. Unfortunately, I did not find that knowledge in this class that I didn't already know from being self-taught, which also goes to show, in my opinion, that there's nothing in this class that you can't learn from YouTube for free. I don't know how much of the class I can actually show without getting kicked in the shin under the lunch table by Susan Wojcicki, but I'm going to show you as much as I possibly can. And this is a great example from the class of what I was talking about earlier. And then add like one, and I think I usually put it on, bring out the beat. I like that one a lot. It does something to it. it sounds like this. Like, what is he even talking about here? I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what plugin I'm looking at or what it does. Another issue with this class is how it's marketed towards all skill levels, which it's not. It, sh it is not. I know I just explained that I'm not a beginner, but even imagining myself as a beginner in this class, I don't think the class and Charlie do a good job of setting it up so beginners can understand what's going on on the screen. There is a session on music theory in this class, which I skipped because it was stuff I already knew, and it's also something you can find really easily on YouTube for free. C, E, G, 
that is what we call a C major chord. Charlie will put plugins on certain tracks, and sometimes he'll explain why, or what the plugin actually does, but I was really lacking a lot of key professional information, even as an intermediate producer. Like, he'll just throw a compressor on the track and not explain why. He's like, I put this on the track because it sounds good, and I don't know why. And that was really not helpful for me. Um, I'm not even gonna pretend I know all the ins and outs of that compressor, it just makes my voice sound good. An important way I learn complicated concepts is knowing why we do certain things. Why did you put that compressor on the track? Did you want a more aggressive, punchy sound? Did you just want to bring out the quieter ends? Why did you boost the high ends on that track? I need to know why, so I have a better understanding of how to make my track sound better, since we're all making different shit. What works for your track that you're making and showing us isn't gonna work for mine. I need to know why you're doing that so I can mimic the same concepts in my work. And I don't blame Charlie entirely for these faults at all. Charlie is a very talented musician, writer, producer, singer, TikTok beatboxer. The drums are gonna go Teaching is a whole different beast. It was a combination of the editors, the direction that he got from the top, and how Monthly or Studio wanted this class to work, which were all combination at fault for how these classes went. And don't get me wrong, there are a lot of nuggets of really good information in this class. It's just, can you sit through hour-long sessions to find those nuggets, when I could just find a 10-minute YouTube video that explains the concept really well and puts all those nuggets in a line, in a little row, all those little little nuggets, like a 10-piece McChicken. Te 10, what are they called? 10-piece ten, ten McChicken nugget. Here are a few of the nuggets of knowledge that I found from this class to be helpful. I can see her. One was when you're writing a song and you're trying to think of lyrics or a concept, if you don't have one already, is to think of things that people already say. S to say something that people already say. Something that comes up easily in conversation, which will make the song easier to remember, make the lyrics easier to recite, and just opt for a more memorable song overall. More little nuggets of knowledge I found from this class were don't be afraid to stack instruments, drums, and vocals, and record seven million different takes of your vocals to create a big chorus effect in your song. And don't be afraid to play around with different instruments you might not be comfortable with. And don't worry if the way you're doing something is the correct way. Because one big thing I learned is that there is no correct way to make music. A lot of what I learned in this class was just stuff that I had already suspected, but having a pro like Charlie Puth validate my process was the most helpful part, being self-taught. And a lot of people do have that time each week to sit through hour-long staring sessions. I'm always thinking about what I want my vocal performance to sound like in my head before I actually start recording. Um, Things are bound to change, but I have an idea that I don't want it to be exactly the same as the chorus because it's, it's, it's a, it's a- And it can be helpful watching someone fiddle around and see the creative process firsthand, but I just wish they cut it down a little bit to make it more consumable. And so the hour-long sessions felt a little more structured within themselves too. Which again, I'm teetering with because writing a song is not a structured process in general. I was bored though, to be honest, who am I kidding? Is this weird? What I did like about the class is that they show you exactly what plugins Charlie Puth is using in each episode. Class, I mean. Which can be very helpful. And this might be obvious, but beware, because the plugins cost a shit ton of money. Which again, is this for beginners or not? I'm sure a lot of beginners don't want to drop hundreds of dollars on plugins that Charlie is using after spending as much as a Razer fanboy mouse and keyboard on this class. I had a lot of the plugins that Charlie Puth was using, but do beginners? Actually, I got pretty curious about this, so I went to the plugin list for the entire class, added up all the costs, a few of them were on sale, and the total was over $5,000. You can do a lot of the things that Charlie Puth was doing within stock plugins, but I wish he showed more of that. I think they didn't know who to cater the class to. I found it too complicated and messy and unexplained for beginners, and yet, as an intermediate producer, I don't think I learned enough for it to be worth a bad financial decision in 2021. I should have just stayed on YouTube. Once again, I don't blame Charlie Puth at all for these faults in the class. I think there might have been a lack of direction no! In terms of what Charlie had to do from the top down. It kind of feels like they just told Charlie Puth to just make a song on camera 
and we'll figure it out later. And that's kind of what happened. If you want to watch someone produce and learn from it for free, I recommend Blanks on YouTube. Blanks is a fantastic producer, he's entertaining, and you will learn lots of 10-piece chicken nuggets of knowledge from his videos. He includes his creative process, writing lyrics, producing, the instrumentation, etc. Et I mentioned earlier that this class was marketed with a small class size group in mind and that you had to turn in assignments. I'll show you what I came up with in this class, but for other people's privacy, I won't show you what they made. Sorry, you won't be able to hear Anna's rough draft idea number one dot mp3. Before we go any further, thank you so much to my patrons for helping support me and this channel. My Patreon link is below. Also follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter at It's Gabby Bell. Okay, let's continue. So when you upload an assignment, which the first First one was a rough idea for a song. The 20 or so other people in the class can comment on it and give constructive feedback. I did find this to be useful for bouncing ideas off of people without bothering that same friend you always send your dumpster fire ideas to. The only issue is, and I don't mean to be mean, but it is a little like the blind leading the blind. It's like being in a calculus class and having half the class centered around students trying to give feedback on other students' math equation answers when we all know jack shit about calculus. A lot of people in the class were beginners and it's great hearing their feedback on my work because we all have ears. Their feedback is valuable no matter how much they actually know about music, but... I took the class so I could get more professional guidance and feedback on my work. My guy, if I wanted opinions on something from strangers on the internet, I would have just posted it on Twitter. I would get all their feedback and more with a sprinkle of insults to really humble me. A lot of people ended up creating some really cool stuff, although I will say great sounding work comes from years and years of trial, garbage, shit, more garbage, error, and then finally some good f and Music. So here's what I ended up making as an initial idea. I decided to build off of Maple Story's Night Market theme. Old Maple Story players, please say hello in the comments. And I decided to make something reminiscent of old 80s Japanese city pop, where it's really bouncy, fun, and playful with the lyrics and music alike. Like here, for example, this person's feedback on my original concept, I, I took to heart, and I ended up changing the entire melody of the first half of the song because of it. But what I really wanted was an experienced guru to hold my hand gently and whisper raise the high end on your snare but the classes did serve as motivation for me to get this song done and so after a while it turned into this recognize the chorus. If you don't, it's from a very popular city pop song called Plastic Love by Maria Takeuchi. It's a beautiful song and I took one piece of the chorus and added it to my song and I wrote the rest of it with my own melody and everything in English. The rest of the song is my writing, my production, but the song ended up being a re-envisionment of what if Plastic Love was written in 2021 America. So I got in tune with what the song was about in Japanese and I continued the chorus in English and then wrote the rest around it. I really love it and it's meant to be an homage to the original. Overall, I'm a big fan of bougie on a budget. Don't spend the money unless you really need a structured class to kick your butt in gear and have accountability and structure for your song making. Choose to support the talented creators that are making amazing tutorials on this platform. And speaking of making informed, accountable decisions, especially in climate change, do I have a service for you? Ren is the sponsor of today's video. Ren takes the guesswork out of how you can positively impact the climate crisis. They have this really cool calculator where you input your diet and transportation method and more, and they'll calculate the exact amount of CO2 you emit and how you can reduce it. One of those ways you can offset your carbon footprint is through funding projects around the globe that are committed to planting trees and protect rainforests. Hello, the Amazon has called, please save her. And once you start making these monthly contributions, your money isn't just 
going into the void and you're sat there wondering where it's going, Ren sends you constant updates of exactly where your money is going and how your contribution is directly impacting the projects you choose to support on Ren. And actually, if you want to jump right in, I've partnered with Ren to plant 10 10 extra trees for the first 100 people that sign up using my link, which you can see on the screen right now and in the description below. Thanks again to Ren for sponsoring this video. Oh hey, you're still here?